Why aren't we raising the the expectation here? Why is it, well, meaningful games in September as opposed to, hey, if you get in the postseason, the Mets have as good a chance as anybody, BT. This is not the little engine that could. This is not some team that's going to back their way into the postseason. This is a team that is playing as well as anybody in Major League Baseball, not just for the last 10 days or month, really going back since the end of May, beginning of June. The Mets have been as good as anybody in the sport. Break a little news here for a second. A little breaking news. It's okay to change opinions, you know. So the opinion and the feeling, more more than the opinion, just the feeling by most Met fans right now is an awesome one. Right. You've got conviction. You've got hope. You've got tangible reasons to latch on to this team. Fair? Yes. Okay. And we'll go over those reasons, Oh, by no the way. doubt. No not doubt. just about look at their record and whatever. No, there's reasons to believe in this. I, I agree. It's not like this, well, well, right. you know, no, there, there's tangible stuff we'll get to. So, changing the opinion is part of, it's, it's part of our job. Now, the feelings that the Met fan has now, they were, I'm guessing, yeah. a little different. And I remember the shows that we did, and I remember what I was saying, I remember what you were saying, I remember what everybody was saying, when the Mets got absolutely waxed in Seattle by the aggregate yep. score of 22-1. to 1. How did the Mets follow that up? They came home, and they lost two out of three to the only major league team that basically doesn't have a home in the Oakland slash Sacramento slash Vegas A's. What does that mean today? That means nothing today because I am here and I've watched every game on mm-hmm. vacation, as you have as well. It's our no, job. not every game, but well, yes. Yeah. I don't say every yeah, game. Yeah. You know, I've followed along. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say, I didn't say every pitch. I said yeah, <laughs> yeah, every, every yeah, game. True, yeah. When we left, the Mets were 67-61, and, and I didn't take them that seriously. Every time it came up, which was basically every day because we talk Yanks and Mets every day, I said it's a cute story, and unfortunately for Mets fans, I believe they're going to fall a little short. I've said that multiple yeah. times. I do not think they will make the playoffs. The Sit here today and to remain married to that opinion, while I might ultimately be right, because right now they're not officially a playoff mm-hmm. team, but to be dug in so deep to not recognize what the Mets have been doing and how they look, and by the way, amazing crowd last night, would be flat out wrong and unfair. Mets are good. Yeah. Mets are a well, good team. Well, that's the point. I think that's – and it's nice to have you on, on board with that. I mean, it's, 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 it took yeah. me – it's a oh, oh, yeah. took me, And I had to earn it, and, dude. By the way, we'll get to Lindor a yeah. little bit later yeah, on yeah. and see if yeah, there's yeah, been yeah. some change about that. I mean, there's 25 games to go. I don't know what you're waiting for <laughs> at this particular point. No, uh, but they, they have been – which is why I felt like they weren't going to get buried. I wasn't – like, or deep down, was there a little bit of a part of me that was worried about it going wrong? Of course, just because that's – you know, I've been burnt as a fan so many times. But the reality is this particular team – has shown you they have been a good team. Matter of fact, since June 1st, which I think is a good way to go back, it's not just convenient, you're talking about now three months of the season. So are we going to value what happened more in April and May or from June 1st on? They have the third best record in baseball. Only the Diamondbacks and Astros have been better. Look at the teams that the Mets have beaten. Yeah, all right, they blew an opportunity on the Hawk to a game. Yeah, they blew an opportunity to sweep the, the Marlins. Yeah, they blew opportunities on this West Coast trip. They could have mm-hmm. been 9-1. and one, For goodness sake, blowing some games, but you know what? They bounce back. They respond. They win series against the Diamondbacks. They split a series against the Padres. Could have been three out of four. They did what they needed to do against the White Sox. They took care of Boston last night at home. They are, and to me, the biggest part of all this, because you and I both agreed on one thing with the Mets. What would be their biggest weakness in your mind preventing us from really and buying? The pitching. Correct. Yeah. Look at what's happened with the starting pitching. Yep. Sean Manaya has been an ace. He's been not, very Not good. ace-like. Yeah. He's been... And ace. And Peterson. you have, yeah, Peterson's been terrific as well. And Severino. So the starting rotation has been good. Yeah, all right, Diaz is going to blow some games. Hey, that happens. Joe's going to bounce back and, and go strike out the side for an inning. Maton has been a revelation in that bullpen. He's been the best arm that they acquired. So bullpen, okay. Starters have been good. And the offense, Lindor clearly carrying it. But they have, they have a team that can, if they get in, now I'm not saying they're going to get in and they're better than the Braves or Padres or Diamondbacks. My biggest question was, 
is this team finally going to show some guts and go head-to-head with Atlanta and beat them for that final spot? By the way, BT, it might come down to the Padres or Diamondbacks. Who knows? Mm. Mets are closing the gap on those teams. But they have to prove as a group that they can get over the hump and get in. I'm not predicting whether they will or won't. All I'm saying is they're playing as well as anybody in the sport for the better part of three months, and they should raise the expectations to even more than just getting in the postseason. Oh, they definitely have. They certainly have. I, I think it's you know what's really up for discussion now is is how much is that that positivity or that conviction permeated fans or maybe dissenting right. voices like me along the way. Yeah, yeah. See, there's two very different things at play here. And they, they they really, they intersect for a moment, but then they go in wildly different directions, much like the Jets with certain things. And it's hard, and you'll see what I mean but with, with the Jets reference there, it's hard to remain on the same plane. Because on one hand, you're, you're looking at this Mets team and, you know, the different iterations they presented this year, 11 games under 500, all the losing streak, them playing very well for most of the season. Like, who are these Mets? Well, mm. I think by now, you know, the Mets have have shown who they are. They're good. I'm not saying they're amazing. They're good. They're resilient. And at this point, I do believe they will be here for the rest of the sea. I do not sense an implosion. I mean, there's 25 games left. Well, but but we've seen previous bet teams implode. You know, up seven with 17 to go. That's why I say the Jet thing. So so there's the 2024 Mets, but then there's the Mets. Like the big circle Mets. Like, I promise you, if we get to December and the Jets have nine wins and they're nine and two, there's going to be a faction of Jet fans that are terrified that the floor's about to just, boom, from just gone. And then you just drop and you implode. Like, like you know, well, like Boomer's team. No, I don't, I'm not, not a dig at Boomer, yeah. but with Pete Carroll when they went win, yeah. winless in December, all the other things that happened. Like, I... I I'm able to do because I'm not a Mets fan, so it's more emotionless for me. I can separate the, like, this, I don't want to use the word sorted, but, like, the sorted Mets history uh, from this team. Because this team has nothing to do with previous Doug Sisk or whatever other name you want to throw in from the past. No, but here's what it does have to do with the recent years that have failed. 2022, this team, they didn't choke away the division, but they got, they went toe-to-toe, eye-to-eye with the Atlanta Braves, and they got beat. Same core guys. 2023, going into the season with World Series aspirations and expectations through the roof, and they failed miserably. This core is the same. So, while I'm a Met fan, I have endured, you know, the, the collapse with seven and a half games or whatever it was with 17 to play seven games to go with 17 to play and they blow that lead or or you know the final day of Shea Stadium or 06 the way that that is whatever reference any year you want even before that the early 90s whatever it may be I am eliminating that as well because it has nothing to do with this team however what it does have to do with this team is the same core that hasn't exceeded or lived up to the expectations starting with 2022 and then, of course, last season. They have to prove to me that they can beat the Braves and they can get the job done. Getting close enough, like I don't know where, actually I do know where this came from. Will Pons years ago, many years ago, said we want to be playing meaningful yeah. games in September. Yeah. And for some reason, that's become a popular phrase with this franchise. Meaningful games in September. Meaningful. What does that mean? Meaningful games. In, no, I want to win in October. That should be the new slogan. Not meaningful games in September. If the Mets fall short, that is a failure. It's not about, oh, well, they did a good job. Yeah. No, go get a spot. It's there for the taking. Now they're doing their job to try to make that happen. It's not going to be easy. Braves aren't going to collapse. You wouldn't think, and the Padres and Diamondbacks, same thing. Go get it, though. I don't want to hear about meaningful games in September. Like, that's some, what, are we going to hang a banner that they played some meaningful games on Labor Day? Well, they used to hang the, you know, remember, catch your eyes and star, baseball yeah, right, like right. it ought to be, meaningful September games. No, I, I'm with you. You should wait. You're way past that. I think that the, ah, oh, man, you can, you can hear, last night, you can hear it. Last night, with 35,000 people yeah. there, MVP. Yeah. Well, he's not going to win the MVP, but he's second, yeah. and he's in the discussion. Oh, Donnie's all time, so he's not going to win it, but that's not the point. To me, I've often said, I know we we'll get these calls going, BT and Sound on the fan. Mm-hmm. Awesome to be back. We missed you guys. Obviously, football's here. Get to the Yankees later. We are pumped to be back. But I have said for a long time 
that the best season as a sports fan is the unexpected one. Now, yeah, it's about a championship, and nothing trumps a championship, but, you know, like even, like the first little flicker, like the 2020 Knicks, when they yeah, gave you that little yeah. flicker there, right? 2017 Yanks, I always use it as an example. Uh, no doubt. Right. I was going there. 2017 Yankees and a host of others. You know, the, the Giants a couple right. of years ago yeah, yeah, right, when they beat right. Minnesota in the playoffs, 2022 season. When you have very modest or negative expect or no expectations coming in, and you would cheat, like... The sound is different. The energy is different. And there's 24 games to go. The Mets are in it. The Mets have earned respect. I'm giving it to them this morning, and I've been the last one to do it. They've earned it, but it sounds different. If the Mets fan right now, they instead of hoping, mm-hmm. they believe. Yeah. It's a beautiful sound. And, and they got to finish the job. Yeah. Because unlike, yeah, the, the, the seasons with no, no second place prizes in New York City. The goal is to make the postseason. That was their goal from the beginning. And now they got to finish the job. They're right there. And think about it, BT, gaining ground on that 10 game yes. West Coast trip yes. that people were worried that might bury them. All right, BT and Sal on the fan. Our friends at Town Fair Tire remind you that at Town Fair Tire, you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Charlie is in Beth Page. What's up, Charlie? Oh, uh, boys, welcome back. I hope you had a great vacation. Thank you. We did. Uh, that is great. But I just first of all, I'd like to say, hey, BT, great job on that Yankee broadcast. Oh, thanks, uh, man. You and Joe yeah, you and Joe Ding on that Saturday morning hit it off. I was on a vacation. Great listening. Made it easy for the drive. But now with my Mets, pick up the girlfriend last night at LaGuardia. Boom, head over to City Field. The fans are into it. Nice crowd for a Monday night, Labor Day weekend. Figured everybody's out east or at the beaches. And they're playing well. I buried them a week ago. When Musgrave pitched against them, he was like Sandy Colfax. And now, last night, that's a good way to start off. September with 2-0. 8-3 and uh, in the last 11. They're hitting the ball. I still don't like Nimmo in that second spot. But he had a big hit last night. Didn't look too great in that center field on that ball. But they're playing well. It seems like they're all in on this. Mendoza, I just like everything he's doing, everything he says. Uh, it just, just it feels great now. It's just amazing. Here, 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 the here's the thing, and thank you for the call, Charlie. And Charlie's a great example, right? He's a guy who's ripping the Mets and had him dead and buried and know they're going to blow it on the West Coast trip. How could they lose a game to Oakland that they were supposed to win? How could they not sweep the Marlins? Whatever. And now everybody, to your point, BT, is feeling great about it. Remember, there are still, what is it, 24 games you said to go? 25 games? Whatever it is. 24 games to go. They got to finish the job. Like, this is not, this is New York. I'm I'm so sick and tired of, while I am as excited as anybody else to watch this team and have that playoff field. Matter of fact, I'm going to go tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. And and for me, on a weeknight, I got got invited, one of my buddies got got tickets. Oh, my God. Yeah, weeknight, Sal. For me, on a weeknight, to go to City Field is a pain in the neck. Mm. So it's a big deal. Like, I know Evan's there every night, and a lot of fans go every night. For me, where I am now in Jersey, pain in the neck. But I'm going to go tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to it. Like, it's exciting. How could you not get wrapped up in what's going on with the Mets? As I've said, one of the best records in baseball since June 1st, playing well. It is a playoff push. they got to finish the job, though. This is no more, you know, if they fall short, it's not like, well, they won 85, 86 games, and nobody thought that they would do that. No. Whatever it takes, I don't care if it takes 90 wins to get in. They need to do it. Otherwise, they have failed. I don't, listen, I uh, failed is a strong word relative to that last point. Like, if the Mets had a three- or a four-game lead now, and they didn't make it, or even a two-game lead, that's failure. But right now, you half game out, which is basically a push. Right. But like, if the Mets go 17-7, and seven, and the that Braves— That should get them in, though. I mean, uh, I mean, it should, but I'm saying if it doesn't, yeah. we still call that a failure? Well, think about this. They're going to have the games with Atlanta head-to-head. They have three games with Atlanta and Atlanta head-to-head. Yeah. If it takes—if it if a sweep is needed, then so be it. Get the sweep. Uh, if it's two of three, then get to two of three. That's really what I want to see. And I also know that it's not just about them. As we said before, it could be about the Diamondbacks or the Padres, two of the hotter teams in baseball for an extended stretch as well. Uh, I don't want to hear it, BT. I'm not into consolation prizes mm-hmm. or, well, meaningful gains in, in, in September and what about next year? It's why I would have gone all in the deadline this year. I was very clear in saying what I would have done at the trade deadline, all in. 
They did not, and I think missed an opportunity. Think about it. Right now with the way that they're playing, how could you argue that they couldn't go on a run in the postseason? Anything can happen in the baseball playoffs. We've seen that before, and if the Mets really solidified their team and loaded up, maybe they'd be in a better spot to go out there and try to chase a World Series, as opposed to what? Waiting for next year and waiting for the prospects? You don't know what's going to happen in the offseason or next year with these prospects. You're in it now. Yeah, I listen, I listen to the station a lot. You know, I went to get the car washed, yeah. and I played a little bit of golf. We'll get to some of our golf yeah. tales a little bit later in the show. I had some fun, different <laughs> things to tell you about, uh, and vice versa. But I was in the car a lot, and I got to tell you, I feel like the the Met fan in in general was in a great place, like grounded, like enthusiastically grounded, not delusional, you know, not over the top. Like, hey, listen, and and I'm I'm gonna push back a little bit, Sal. I. I like, there's a difference between a consolation prize of finishing short of the race and 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 lauding them. Like, if they finish two games out and they win 89 games, I'm not saying you throw a parade, but how do you crush them? Because they weren't good enough. Well, but yeah, yes, but that still represents well, those two a games, strong well, what finish. If, what if they traded for Blake Snell? Or yeah, but, that's, they, but that conversation's expired. Oh, I'm like, I'm talking oh, about oh, right but, now. But uh, you're asking me. I, oh, I can't speak for everybody. Yeah. I'm saying for me personally, I don't accept losing. I don't accept second place. I don't accept less than. I don't care. Now, I did accept a step back this year, but to make it a good year and special – they got to finish. They, they got to finish the job. Put the finishing touches on and get in. Like, there is not going to be any, well, they won 90 games, but they didn't get in. Well, that means they should have won 91 or 92 or 93 or whatever. Well, literally, it sure. But it also means that maybe, you know, if if the first few bricks of the, mm. of the culture weren't yeah. – were in place properly by Mendoza, yeah. maybe they would have fallen nine games short. I know, but I've heard, I, I understand I've what you're saying, this, by the way. I've heard this before. And by the way— And I respect that. And, That's a good mentality. But, man, it's—, it's I for the Coming from me! Yeah, I know. Me! I know. Like, if they go 17-7, and 16-8, and eight, how the hell am I going to bury this team? No, bury— I, can, I can't do that. Bury is different than, say, that they have failed or didn't, you know, live up to the expectation that the, the post— Hey, they said playoffs— Right, we were wrong, laughing at them, saying hey, this isn't a playoff team. Eleven games under five hundred. What are you kidding me? Out of the gate, zero and five. Yeah, they were proven right about this team that they were a legitimate team and they should be taken seriously. Now they have to finish the job. I'm not gonna. I don't care if they win ninety games and don't get in. It's not. Yeah, but that means somebody won more than you to get in the postseason. Doug is in Stratford, for Connecticut. What's up, Doug? Hey, how you guys doing? Good. What's up, Doug? Hey, what's up, brother? I got a couple of uh, suggestions. Uh, maybe I could be coach for the day. Uh, I'm a big Met fan. I think it, we go right down the stretch. I think a couple things I'd like to say. We, we can't be coddling our players. We can't have Alvarez. He's got to go backup catcher right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. No worried about the, the – the, no, he's got to. He can't even hit the ball. He's a mess. Terrible at bat. Look it. Look at his at bat. He's Terrible. a mess. We got to score up the lineup, okay? I'll uh, – in Glaces, every day, I don't care if he's playing third and Viento's dh that's a great move, shores up our defense. Nimmo's got to drop down in the order. We put Marte at second. The guy can steal. He can con- he can get a base and a run all by himself. We, what we got to do is part and put the best lineup every day, every play. Hey, Doug, let me ask you, Doug, let me ask you, Doug, I don't mean to jump in, but don't you think that Mendoza's done a pretty good job of doing that? I mean, Alonzo's batted second, third, fourth. I mean, I mean, Nimmo's bounced around. I mean, everybody's bounced around. Now, maybe with the catching situation, which, by the way, Mendoza addressed over the weekend, said Alvarez is our guy, even though you had two more doubles, a couple more hits from from, from your backup from Terence last night. Uh, That's a tough situation. I... mm, I, I mean, you can't just, you're not going to forget about Francisco Alvarez. You're just not. Uh, you're Doug, just not. Doug, here, here's the thing. Like, you're entitled to your opinion, and you come on and talk about your team. Don't you think that Carlos Mendoza knows more about managing than you do? This is what we got to do. Move Nemo down. Start this guy. Sit back. Just sit back, relax, and watch as Mendy does the work. He's been great all year long. I'm not going to sit here and criticize. If Mendoza feels like Torrens is going to be the guy eventually, which, by the way, he might be going in the postseason. He can say Alvarez is the guy right now, trying to give him a little confidence boost. Sure, he knows he needs Alvarez eventually. But if, if he's not getting the job done, he's going to go with Torrens. The proof is in the pudding. He's done that. He's benched McNeil before. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's, he's, well, he's lowered. He put they, Mendo- uh, took Pete out of the four spot. Correct. He doesn't care about that. Cut guys. You know, yeah, with yeah. Nervaez, whatever it may be early on. Yeah. yeah. Wendell not getting the job done. The Mets have held guys accountable. It's one of the reasons why they have one of the best records in baseball since June first. Hard to believe. 
but the Mets should be taken seriously. 888-808-1019 on the fan. Moira calls on the side. BT and Sal.